This video is going to give you some Google search tips. So we're going to talk about different ways you can better search Google, different tips you can pass on to students, and then we're also going to talk about how to evaluate websites. Now when it comes to students searching the internet, they wish they had a button that just said give me the answer. Typically students just type in something into Google that they think is what they're looking for and then they use one of the top five results as the website that they find. Um, they can find better websites if they really think about better keywords when they're getting to the search process. So instead of just letting students go, give them a topic and just send them to the internet, why don't you talk with students a little bit about using better terms when you're searching? There are some tools out there that can help you with this. We are going to learn how to use the Research Project Calculator when we meet in person, but I just want to show you a couple of the things that are here that can help with websites and helping students search websites. So there are a bunch of support materials in the Research Project Calculator, and there's a couple of them that are useful to help students think about keywords. There's this one right here, it's narrowing a topic, so helping students think of what is their topic. You know, students often come talk to librarians and say, I want to find information on global warming. And they need help really narrowing that down because global warming is too large of a topic. So that handout can help. And then there's handouts like this, the research process, questions and answers. And with this tool, what you see is it can really help students narrow down and think of keywords. So when this opens up, you'll see at the top of it, it will show the topic that the student has come up with. And below that, it will help them think about keywords for that topic. So here is the PDF. And like I said, they would enter the topic. And then in these circles, they fill out keywords for that topic. It may then help them figure out a research question which may then help them think of even more keywords. So talking with students about keywords before you set them free to use Google or to use library databases can be a really great way to help them better search. Now before I start showing you some Google search strategies, I want to just give you a little bit of information on how Google works. So Google has a Google bot, which is a huge computer that crawls billions of web pages and it indexes them. Those index pages are then searchable through Google. Now the reason results show up the way they do is that they have a lot of factors to de determine why one result appears above the other. There's actually over 200 different factors that determine why something shows up first. And one of those factors is actually popularity, which is why we see Wikipedia quite often showing up as one of the first results, even if you're searching for the name of a company and you think the company's name should show up first. Wikipedia still often does. So that is how Google works, that they get all these pages, then they attach all of these relevancy rankings. Over 200 factors are taken into account to determine why something shows up the way it does. Now, if you know how to search Google better than just typing in some words, you can typically try to find some of those better websites when you're doing your searches. So that's what we're going to move into now. So I'm going to pull up Google here and give you a lot of different tips on how to search Google. Now, one thing I'll say right from the beginning is that you do not need to put the word and between terms. A lot of people will start typing in Google and they'll add an and. The and really doesn't matter whatsoever. Google ignores the and, so you don't have to put the and in. So you just want to type in the keywords that you're using. Another thing that you don't have to pay attention to is punctuation. Google ignores punctuation, so you should too. So a lot of people will type things like school age and they'll put hyphens in. And they'll put hyphens for things like non-kin as well. But Google ignores that punctuation, so you should too. So here if I do the search, I will get my list of results, which of course shows up with some ads at the top. But below that I'll get my list of results. Now if I were to take out the punctuation and just put spaces where there should be a hyphen um, or colons or um, commas, and if I have the search done then, you'll see I get the exact same results. So Google ignores punctuation, so why waste your time putting in punctuation? Another thing that you might want to pay attention to 
is putting quotation marks around things. So when you're searching for Treasure Island. Now, like I said, popularity is one of the largest relevancy ranks. So you can see when I search for Treasure Island, the first things that come up are Las Vegas hotels and then the casino in Minnesota. But what if I was really searching for the book? There's some things that you can do. First, putting things in quotation marks can help. So then let's also put in the author's name. You can see I did not put an and between these terms. We do not need to add an and. So then I'll do the search and then I am getting results for the book. You don't always have to put everything in quotation marks though. So if I do something like dinosaur egg, I want a dinosaur egg fossil. I might not put dinosaur egg fossil all in quotation marks because it might not be written as a phrase in the article. If you put something in quotation marks, it searches it as a phrase. So I'm just going to put dinosaur egg in quotation marks so it searches that as a phrase and then put the word fossil so that it will also search for the word fossil in the article. One tip that I really like is the minus symbol. So I mentioned how Treasure Island, typically if you just search for Treasure Island, it shows up with the casino and a resort. But you can put a minus in front of the word casino to exclude that word. So let's do Treasure Island minus casino and minus resort. Now the first thing that comes up is the book. Okay, then we have a Treasure Island supermarket. So I would still add the name of the author, but you can see when you put minuses in, last time the very first two results were casinos. So now we have no casinos because the minus has taken it out of our search. I use this a lot. So for instance, oopsie, Abraham Lincoln. There have been movies coming out calling him a vampire hunter or a zombie slayer. So when you're searching Abraham Lincoln, a lot of times some of those movies appear. But I don't want that. I want information about our president. So I can put Abraham Lincoln in quotation marks, minus vampire and minus zombie, and nothing about those movies will appear in my search. And even simple things can really help with the minus symbol. So if I'm looking up information on bass fish, I'm also going to put minus instrument, minus music, and minus shoes. You'd be surprised at how many of those things appear when I'm still searching for bass fish. So now the results that come up are about the fish. Um, I would ex especially put instrument and music in here because there is a band called fish even though it is spelled differently, but if you search bass and fish you sometimes get results about the band as well. So when you're doing a search and if you're seeing some things that appear that really aren't what you're looking for, put that in your search with a minus symbol in front of it. Now earlier I said to exclude the AND, but you can use OR to your advantage. So let me show you. I want to find legislation on guns or firearms. It may be referred to in either of those ways in legislation. So I'm going to put guns or firearms. That way it will search for either of those words on the websites that I'm looking for. Now you can actually take this one step further because legislation could also be referred to in different ways. So you can actually use parentheses in a Google search. So if I put parentheses and then I do legislation or laws or bills and then close that parenthesis then I put it around guns or firearms what it's going to do is it's going to search websites for the words legislation or laws or bills and websites that also have guns or firearms so we're getting closer at what I'm looking for when we do searches like this now another thing you can do is also limit to the type of website that you're looking for. So let's leave this in the search bar here, but then I'm going to add another thing here and I'm going to put site colon gov. 
What that's going to do, it's going to limit my search and it's going to only search government websites, websites that have .gov at the end of them. So when I do that, then I'm getting all my results come from .gov websites. So if we scroll through these, we're not going to see any .com websites, only .gov. So that's why we're seeing things from a bunch of different states about the legislation for firearm regulation. Now you can also use that site in a different way. So let me delete this. I want to search for things on the Mars rover, but I want to see just what's on a certain website. So instead of typing gov there, I can do nasa.gov. So what this will do is it will search for the words Mars rover on websites that are maintained by nasa.gov. So you'll see every website that comes up here, they're all from nasa.gov. So if there's a certain website that you want to search, then use this site tool. Type in site colon and write the name of the website right after it. You can see I did not use any spaces there. You do want to write it just like that when you're limiting to a certain website. Another thing you can do with this is don't forget that we can use the minus symbol in different ways as well. So what I'm going to show you now is how to use this site tool to eliminate certain types of websites. So if I was looking for global warming statistics, whoops, but I did not want any from .com websites, commercial sites, then I could do minus site colon com. So it's going to eliminate websites that are .com. So I should be getting organizational websites and government websites. So you can see .gov website is showing up here, as well as some .org websites as well. I'm not getting any of those .com websites. I eliminated, eliminated them from the search by doing minus site colon com. Okay, moving on to a different um, trick here. I'm going to show you how to limit to file type. So a lot of people put their documents online. If you're looking for documents on a certain topic, you can actually limit to the type of file you're looking for. So I want some information on STEM education because I'm going to be making a PowerPoint on this to talk about people. So what I might want to do is see are there any other PowerPoints online that I could look at. So what I can do is put file type colon and then the type of file I'm looking for. So PPT is the PowerPoint file type. So if I do STEM education, file type colon PPT, it's going to limit my search to PowerPoints online that have STEM education in them. So if I scroll down here, you can see all my results right before them. It says PPT. All of these are PowerPoints that include information about STEM education. You can also do this for other things. So I'm showing you a bunch of Google tips right now. So let's see if there's anything. Google search tips, let's see if there's a PDF out there. So you put your keywords before it, then put file type colon PDF. And look, here's a bunch of different PDFs that show up. One of them looks like it might even be from google.com. And then you may find others. Here's some from a university that might help. So this is a great way to lim limit to file type by using this file type um, tool here because it can really help you find some things out there that you might find in regular searches. But if you do want to quick find a nice PDF that might have some tips on it, just limit to the PDF file type. Now Google can also do some different things for you too. Google can actually be your dictionary. If you put find colon and then the word right after it, what you will get is the definition of this word, as along with um, how to pronounce this word. And right below the word, if you click on more info, it's really small, but if you click on more info, it brings you to a different page that has even more definitions pulled from around the web, and then it even allows you to translate this if you want to. So Google can be a way to get dictionary words. 
Google can also things, it can also be your calculator. So let me just do something really simple here. 345 divided by 3.5. What you'll see is a calculator that pulls up and it gives you the answer, but then as you can see, it also gives a lot of other things that you can do with the calculator. Now it's not the most advanced calculator out there, but if you don't have a calculator with you, and if you don't have an advanced graphic calculator on your iPad or your iPhone, it's real easy to just use Google as your calculator. It also can do different things too. I use it to just quickly do percentages. So I want to know what 20% of 245, or excuse me, 20% of 245, 85. You can just type that in and Google will come up and tell you what the exact percentage is. It can also really easily give you currency conversions too. 2 euro. And then I use it on my iPad when I'm in the kitchen and I need some help figuring out some things because I can do something like 2.5 cups, 2 tablespoons. Now as you'll see with this converter that pops up, it does give me my answer, but it shows you then all the other things that it can do as well. So right now we were converting, we were looking at volume, but you can see a lot of different things here. Temperature can help you figure out. You can type in the temperature here. You'll get it in Fahrenheit. Um, you can do speed. You can do fuel consumption. So there's a lot of different things here that you can use Google for. So keep in mind all of the different ways that you can use Google. Now I gave a lot of different tips. And I got these tips from many different websites, and I link to a few of the websites in the Millie Wiki under September. Um, one of them is just linking out to a Google page called Inside Search. They give you information on how search works, and then there's a page called Tips and Tricks. So you can look at the Tips and Tricks page, and they'll give you even more information, much more than what I even showed you on all the different things that you can do with Google. Another website I gave was a little article that was 12 quick expert tips, or sorry, quick tips to search Google like an expert. And this goes over a lot of the ones I showed you using the minus symbol and all of that. So this is a quick, good article to look at to get some of those nice and easy tips on how to best search Google. And then there is this infographic. This is called Get More Out of Google, and it's actually a really long infographic that gives a lot of these tips, like here's, here's the site tip, here's the quotation tip, and there's more tips on this infographic. So when I've showed people this infographic before, a lot of them have printed it out and hung it in their classrooms. So to find more information on all of these websites and how to search Google, go to the Millie Wiki to look at the Google section I have under September, which links out to these websites and more. Now the last thing I want to talk about real quick is evaluating websites. You do need to talk to students about evaluating websites because there's kind of a lot of crap out there. For instance, there's this website that is trying to help people save the endangered Pacific Northwest tree octopus. This one really gets students a lot, especially younger students when they're searching for animals. If they run across this, they start thinking that there are um, that there is an octopus that can live in trees. Or dog lovers have been taken in by this website. This is Dog Island. And you can tell they even tell you the weather and things of Dog Island from day to day. So a lot of people have been taken in by this website. Then there's things like the onion. So this is called the daily current. And this is just like the onion where Sarah Palin did not say that global warming will bring back the dinosaurs. Um, but this website puts a lot of articles out there like this that have been known to trick many different people. But this is like the onion. And then this website has actually taken in a lot of students. Um, students have looked at this website and it's um, it looks 
at first glance like it's a good website about Martin Luther King Jr. Um, but this website is actually a hate website. Um, but it has been fooled, uh, it has fooled a lot of students, especially younger students. So especially with websites like this out there, you need to really pay attention and figure out um, ev of evaluating the websites to try to figure out what might be a good website. Now there are tools out there to try to help with evaluating websites. So I'm going to pull up this document. Again, this comes from the Research Project Calculator, which you will learn about when we meet in person. But this is again one of the sheets that's available there. And it's 10 questions for evaluating websites. So it asks things like, is the site designed well? What is the date on the website? Is there an about this site link? And what does it say on that page? Um, what kind of sites link to this website? How does the information compare with what you already know about the topic? So a lot of good questions to think about when you're evaluating websites. So this sheet can really help students too to figure out if something they're looking at is credible or not. And then don't forget that there are other Google search engines out there. So we have the main Google search, but there's also Google News. You can do different searches on this page and it will just search news and if you go under settings to personalize your news you can also look at historical news here. Under more here at the top of Google there is also um, Google Books where you can find ebooks that are online. Um, it won't have the most the latest ebooks those you're going to have to purchase but you may find old versions um, of ebooks that you might be using in your classroom that are available here or often it does give previews of new books so it'll give you a you know a couple chapter preview or one chapter preview of a new book as well so this is a way to discover about uh, more books and then there's also Google Scholar which is under even more Google has a lot of information and a lot of different websites that they have and one of them is Google Scholar so here it's underneath specialized search you can see they have a lot of other specialized search as well but Google Scholar is one that you might be interested in because this allows you to search scholarly literature that's online so if we search for something on Google we'll get articles and these are scholarly literature online now these first few they most likely would ask you to purchase these articles online. So you'd want to go to your library to see if they had access to them. But sometimes in the right hand column you can see PDFs of the articles. If you see a PDF in the right hand column, this article is online. So you could actually click on this PDF and open the full text of this article. So Google Scholar is also an interesting tool to use. Now the next video is going to show you how to create your own search engine. There is something called Google Custom Search. It allows you to create your own search engine that searches websites that you want it to search. It's really fabulous to create something like this for young students, especially if you're going to have them go find news or something like that. There's so much out there. So you could create your own search engine that only searched five websites if you want it to. So the next video will show you step by step how to create your own custom search engine using Google Custom Search. So that's it for this video. Move on to Google Custom Search to learn how to make your own search engine.